Hello, 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 and welcome to a tutorial that's going to be a little bit different from the rest. This time around I'm going to use Grasshopper to do something that it's not really used for, and it's a little bit going to kind of break it out of the box, if that's even a saying. I assume it's not, but a little bit of backstory, right? So, um, me and my wife, we really liked this anime called Dororo, and... In Stockholm, we found this art book right here, which is right, right, this art book right here, which is pretty neat, and it's basically the art of, of, of that particular anime. And one of the pages in that art book is this one, where this is like the, the bad guy, and he has this, um, this eye, right? This eye that has two pupils, and those pupils are basically kind of merging in. Uh, can you see? Uh, there we go. And they, they kind of, one of them is wandering around, and once it kind of reaches the original pupil, it merges with it, right? And that's, that's the guy himself. And I was wondering, <clears throat> would it be possible to animate this and render out a small animation with Rhino, V-Ray, and Grasshopper? Because you can do it with Blender, but that's boring. <laughs> so instead, let's do it with, with programs that are not used for it. So really quickly, um, I will begin... Wait, come on, camera. There we go. I will begin with getting um, some sort of a character or, or some sort of a... Um, yeah, a, a character in, into my scene, right? So uh, for that, I'm using Das Studio. So that's day A Z Daz uh, Studio, and it's free uh, to download and to use. And it has um, it's basically used for character design and creating poses for the characters. So once you kind of download it and get it, by the way, I would suggest just having it on your computers. Um, you can go here to figures um, under smart content. If you go to figures under people, you'll have male, female. You choose male. Um, well, in, in my case, I choose male, um, and we go for real world, and here you have like different variants, uh, so I'll just choose uh, Genesis 3 male. Uh, I believe that one kind of by default works best in terms of importing, exporting. Same thing for female characters, Genesis 3 female works quite well. So this is like the, the mesh that you get. Of, of that particular character. And if I go to the viewport, you can see it's textured, right? And it's nothing too, nothing too fancy, but it's, it's good enough for, for what we want to do, right? So the pose is super awkward, super weird. So here on the right-hand side, I'll go to the scene navigator, and I'll select my Genesis 3 mail so that it's basically selected in the scene. And then here on the left-hand side, under smart content, I can find poses and I can filter by function. And then here I can find a pose that I you know that 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 I will want to have. And I think something like urban model 03 is gonna do the trick. So I'll just drag and drop it in, and that's it, right? I, I have my character and I have my pose. Uh, that's all I need to do in DAS. Uh, once I've done that, I can just straight up export it. So file, export. You can also, by the way, you don't need to use DAS. You can just download you know, any 3D model from the internet. But I just prefer to have that flexibility of like uh, being able to create any pose I want. Okay, so we have that. And I will export it to my desktop as an OBJ format. And I'll just call it character. Hit save. Uh, here I have all of these settings kind of dialed in. Um, I don't really know what what needs to be said about these. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, just copy my settings. There's, there's. I, I don't really want to go too deep into this. This is not a tutorial about that, right? So I'll just hit accept. It's, it has been exported. Then I go to Rhino, go to File, Import, go to Desktop. Find my character 3D model, hit open. Um, yeah, just ag agree. 
And there we go. There's my character. So now if I look at it, well, first of all, we're in wireframe view, right? So let's change this to shaded view. If I look at it, it's blue. And the reason why it's blue is because under display, um, I have color back faces turned on and they are set to blue, right? So if I change them to, let's say red, it's gonna be red, right? So that means that um, the normals of this mesh are inverted. That's fine, we will, we will fix them. But the first thing is, if I select this, uh, this mesh, I can see that it's one open mesh, right? So I need to clean this up a little bit and also kind of just delete a few mesh faces because I don't need the whole, the whole body. All I care about is, you know, my, my scene is going to be kind of this zoomed in, so <clears throat> I don't care about the rest of the body. Let's do that. So I'll, I'll choose to split this joint mesh which will split up this guy into like separate parts. And this is the main body. And let me just create a layer for it and just write main body or whatever, whatever you want. I'll just call it body. Change object layer. There we go. Then we have, uh, so these are nails and these are toenails. I don't care about those, so I just delete them. Uh, these are the teeth. I don't care about those. I delete them. These are the eyelashes. I do care about those. So I'll create a new layer and call it um, eyelash, uh, eyelash surface. Change object layer. Oh, there's, it, it's basically like double surface. Uh, so yeah, sure. I just changed those. Um, and what do we have left? We have the eyeballs and we have the tear ducts. Well, it's not the tear ducts themselves, but we have like the, the meaty part of the eye, the and underneath the eyelid. So I can just kind of create a new layer, call it eyelid. Change that up. And then here we have uh, eyeballs, right? And if I kind of show you, so let me show you what's, what's, what makes up the eyeball here in, in this particular mesh. If I move this away, you can see that this is like the second layer of it. I move that away. This is the retina. I move that away. This is like the, the iris. Wait, or is this the iris and this is the retina? I don't know English names, but basically that's, that's the structure of this. I don't really need it all. I definitely don't need the retina and the iris, so I'll be deleting those from here and from here. And I also don't need like double shell, so I'll be deleting the inner ones here, like that. Perfect. So now we have like two meshes here. And what I want to do is I want to rebuild these two eyeballs as, um, how do you call it? Uh, as spheres, as NURBS, uh, NURBS spheres, right? So I'll be creating a sphere, right? Like that. And I'll choose that I, I, I will be using four point sphere. That four point. And I'll just start from uh, like the middle axis here. So from here, I'll define the opposite side right here. And I already messed up. That's the wrong. Yeah, that's the wrong line. But maybe that's gonna work out. We'll see. Like that. And like that. So basically, I, I defined four points on my on my sphere. And I'll kind of do the same thing here. Four point sphere. Let's try to be a little bit more precise this time. Like that. Like that like that and then the top point okay so this is a little bit better anyway uh both both are fine oh, they, they, they're okay it, it's fine if the sphere is a little bit too big or too small we can scale it up later so i'll be deleting the meshes um, and just keeping the spheres now if i turn if i turn everything on you can see that everything is kind of fine except for uh the head right or, or the, the body it's all messed up it's transparent and the reason why it's transparent is because the normals of the mesh are flipped 
So what I can do is just uh, flip, flip the mesh and now it's good, right? If I look at it from the Arctic view, I can see that, you know, every, everything is in order. Um, there are a few things left to do. You can see these seams that I don't really want. So I will just be selecting the mesh and welding it, which will get rid of the seams uh, where the mesh patches meet. Uh, angle tolerance 180 will make sure that all of the seams are gone. So now the shading is going to be smooth. Okay. Um, and the rest thing is, I guess let's go to the front view. Delete mesh faces or delete faces. Sorry, it's in Rhino 7, it's straight up delete faces. Let's select these. Let's see these faces right here. Just hit delete or hit enter rather. Because this is the only part which we are going to be working on. Move it down. Zoom selected. Okay, we're good to go. So, grasshopper parts, right? I will be loading in grasshopper and we will start thinking about how we can actually create that, uh, that effect that we are after. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So it's water break. So the way I, I'm thinking about this is those pupils, when they merge, it's like an isosurface, right? So, so the closer they get to, to each other, the more they kind of merge into one blob. And the further they are away, the more like separate circles they are. So what I'm going to do, um, let me just create a BRAP real quick, uh, just a BRAP component. Um, what I'm going to do is I will map so I'll create this kind of rectangle, let's say something like this, right? A rectangle. And I will map points inside of this rectangle and I'll create a pattern. And then I will map, map back the pattern onto the spheres. That should work, technically. Uh, technically speaking, it should work, right? So let me hide everything except for the two spheres. And the rectangle because that's what we want to have and i'll actually take one sphere and just move it closer to to my rectangle just so that everything is kind of close by once i know that this works we will kind of apply it to the to the two eyes so i have my curve set one curve like that oh yeah and people asked me to use bifocals so i'll be using bifocals from now on there we go. So I have my curve component where, you know, I attach my curve here. Uh, I will create a, a surface from it, SRF surface. So now it's, it's a surface and I will evaluate, evaluate that surface at a UV coordinate, right? So my UV coordinate is going to be a multi, um, How is it called? MD slider, multi-dimensional slider. So that's going to be my UV coordinate. And if I kind of connect it like so, right? And then drag it around, you can see that it only kind of moves in a very small um, area. The reason for that is that this is not being mapped one-to-one, -one, but rather it's like these two values are millimeters, right? Right, right now. So it's not um, it's not mapping it to proportion. Rather, it's mapping it to millimeters. I can uh, fix that by let's go. Uh, let's see, going in here and choosing reparameterize. Right click, reparameterize, and now it's going to be mapping it through the whole uh, surface. So once you reparameterize something, UV coordinates become proportional, not unit based. Okay, so now we can get any point on our um, surface. I want another one, another point. 
And actually, let me do it the stupid way. So I'll just have another evaluate surface like so. Or maybe we don't need that. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Uh, no, let's just use the shift key and connect it to the, the, the only evaluate surface that we have and just move it around. So now we have two and my planes are super big. So let me just go to display preview plane size and change this to eight. I think that's the default value, right? So now I have full control over where the points are on my, um, on my surface. Now we need to create um, that, that kind of iris effect around the points, right? And the way we do that is, I believe it's under, where is it? Is, is it under math? No. I keep forgetting. I think it's under triangulation then. Yes, under triangulation, we find metaball, 2D metaball isocurve through point, uh, 2D metaball isosurface by threshold and custom charge values. Okay, let's try out these three. So we will be using metaball, but I don't, I'm not sure which one. So I'll just kind of get all three of them in and we'll see which one kind of fits our purpose best according to the inputs. So the regular metaball has point charge locations, plane in which it's calculated, isocurve intersection point, and accuracy. No, uh, we don't have the isocurve intersection point. All we have is points and we will have strength of those points, nothing more. Uh, Metaball Custom has point locations, charge strength, that's important, that's good, plane, threshold, and accuracy. Oh, that's, that's a good one. And what about this? Point, plane, threshold, accuracy. Okay, so this one doesn't have strength. And I think we do need strength uh, to be able to control how, how intense it gets. Um, so we will be using Metaball Custom. Okay. So five inputs. First one is point. Well, we do have two points here, so we just straight up do that. Uh, second one is charge, point charges. Um, I have no idea, so I will just say one point. Um, let's try 0 0.5. A slider 0 0.5, connect that to charges. Um, that doesn't work. You must apply equal number of points and charges. Okay, fair enough. I have two points. I need two charges. So I will just copy the slider like that. Now it works. Okay, so here when we have charge of 0 0.5, that means that the points will be uh, one millimeter in diameter. Like it's going to make a circle that's one millimeter in diameter. Let's see how, it, how they behave when they are close by. Connecting. That's good. So we have that working for us. Um, of course, they need to be a little bit bigger. So let me do 1, 1, right? 1, 1. We will adjust it once we kind of map it to the sphere. And let me move the sphere closer. Once we move it, uh, map it to the sphere, we will adjust the, the size, right? Uh, of, of, of these two metaballs. So the plane is correct. The threshold is, seems, seems to be fine. We will kind of mess around with the threshold later, later on. And the accuracy is also fine. Um, so now, let's actually map it, right? Let, let's try to map it. So for that, I will go to transform and we will try to find some, some, some way on how to morph from this surface to the sphere because sphere is a surface right so we will be using um wraps geometry onto a surface plop i have no idea what that is but let's try it what else do we have surface box no 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 flow realigns objects from a base curve to a target curve no uh, mirror surface no sporp the forms an object from a surface uh, to a target surface. Okay, that is good. What about surface morph? More geometry into surface UVW coordinates. Okay, we will try that one out as well. 
map to surface, map a curve onto a surface via control points. No, we will not be using that. Okay, so we have three, uh, three variants. And here I'm just teaching you how to build up a definition by yourselves, right? And, and how, how you can work. You basically just get all of the possible tools that might work into your scene and then or into your canvas and then you kind of take a look at what works what doesn't work so for splop it asks us for geometry uh, to deform sure we have this geometry here uh, our metabol curves uh, are the geometry source plane of the formation x y sure uh, surface to wrap geometry onto that is going to be our sphere uh, so we will reference it as a b-rep or as a surface doesn't matter I will just reference it in as a b-rep I'll hide it and connect it like so there we go then for UV parameter on surface used for orienting ah that might be a problem uh, for now UV parameter so that's like two coordinates right zero zero being one uh, like the first corner of the surface and one one being the opposite corner of the surface right and then you have zero one one zero right two more corners um so i'll just type in slash slash zero comma zero let's let's try that zero comma zero okay so something's happening but it's super bad could it be because this is not um, reparameterized? Okay, now when it's reparameterized, nothing, nothing's happening at all. So I'm not sure what's what's going on with this particular tool. Angle, rotation angle, and rigid. Okay, I will, I will keep this as it is right now. And we will try out these two more and we will see if any one of those two work better. Base geometry, oh, SPORF seems to be immediately a better solution because it asks for a base geometry and we do have this base surface, right? So I'll be just using that, like I'll connect the surface to the SPORF base geometry. Then our, wait. Oh, sorry, base geometry is the metabol uh, output. Our uh, base surface is the, the surface here, like that, right? So this metabol, these two curves, will be mapped from this surface to UV parameter. Uh, let's try 0, 0 again, like that. So we are, we are doing 0, 0, 0, 0 again. And target surface, we are going to be doing the, the sphere again. And then it's asking us for a parameter uh, on target surface for orienting. So we will be using 0, 0 again, like that. Let's see what it gives us. It gives us two spheres, much, much better than what we had with Splop. So I'll be just deleting that altogether. And instead, we'll be just using SPORF. And I won't even be checking out Surface Morph because already I can see that this works, right? So I don't need to. Let's see what happens when they kind of merge. Okay, seems to be good. And also one more thing, um, with spherical projections or with spherical mapping, uh, you always have distortion on the poles. So I wanna check what happens when we are close to, yeah, see how messed up it gets when we are close to the top right here. And also it's gonna get messed up when we are close to the bottom, like that. So you need to be mindful where your poles are in, 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 in terms of, of the eyeball. You want your poles to be right at the top of the eye and right at the bottom, because that's what's never going to be shown right uh, most of like the least amount of distortion is going to happen on the how is it called the god damn it 
the, the middle edge, right between the poles. I forgot the name, sorry. Anyway, um, let us position this somewhere here and this one goes uh, somewhere somewhere here and we do have a working working solution here okay so that works um next up we want this to be connected to the to the eyeballs right so instead of using this sphere i will be using these two spheres here right set multiple b reps yeah, just works. Just straight up works. Hide those. Um, let's look at the body. Let's look at it with the body. Uh, Arctic view. Okay, seems to be good. Let's do some custom preview. This is the moment where I start testing it out, right? And then seeing what works, what doesn't work, and, and, and so on. That's my custom preview, and for this fourth, uh, we will be using. Um, what are we going to be using for this fourth? <laughs> so we need to figure out how to get this retina in and how to actually give it give it color, right? So sporf. Uh, if we use surface split hello surface split yeah there we go surface split and we split our spheres with the curves technically it should always always split technically like rhino really likes to mess things up and not work uh from time to time but but in most occasions it it does tend to work and it seems like it is splitting right yeah okay so let, let's let's do that and actually let's investigate with both yeah it seems to be okay so surface split works and i will use i will extract just the retina by measuring for area of of the fragments that were split apart so I get, uh, let me show you what I get. In square millimeters, I get um, the, the, the size of, of, of uh, this surface right here, right? And also the remaining surface of the eyeball itself. So we have that, and then I can sort the list. I can sort the list so that the smallest value is always in the top and together with that, that list I can sort the fragments. So now there's always like this trimmed surface is always going to be um, the small one. Actually what I want is I want the big one, right? So I will reverse the list here and now the first one is always going to be the, the, the remainder of the eyeball. And actually, the, right now, the body is in the way. Let's look at the eyes themselves. So the remaining surface is indeed always the first in the list. And I can show you with list item. That's the first. And that's the, you know, the... The, the biggest surface if I hide everything here and actually I'll delete it for now you can see that this is what we end up with let's see what happens if these are separated if it breaks it it doesn't seem to break it still works quite quite well okay so we're we're, we're sticking to it we are sticking to it uh, what I'm going to do is I will call uh, call index and I will remove come on. I will remove index 0 from the sorted list so this these eyeballs the remainder of the eyeballs is the thing that I am indeed removing right and what we're left with is going to be always just these two uh, not spheres, but uh, circles that are kind of merging together and kind of 
floating about always on on a sphere right they they really mess up there or or maybe they don't maybe it's just the way we look at it again um that the poles are really um a problematic area but everything else seems to be working quite well so we're gonna stick to it let me look at the body real fast zoom selected just to zoom in here yeah look looks fine looks fine okay so now here we have two surfaces and i will be just straight up extruding them maybe i'm not sure uh should we extrude them or maybe we convert them to a mesh yeah let's convert them to a mesh i think I'm just thinking how to how to do that. Um, there in, in Rhino Seven, there is this uh, triangulate mesh or or, or uh, triangle remeshing, uh, which is located somewhere here. Try remesh. There we go. This one right here, which might work. Let's see. Uh, geometry target. Ah, it just breaks, huh? I wonder why. Maybe because this is like a cold list. But what if we convert this into a mesh, like so, and then try to remesh it? Yeah, now it works. Huh. So now this is like triangulated, and we can do um, that. That means that now we can thicken it up, right? Um, I will just use uh, Viewer Bird uh, Thicken. Viewer Bird's Mesh Thicken. And I'll just give it like 0 0.01. I don't know uh, the, 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 how big it is. Uh, 0 0.01 seems to be maybe 0 0.015. A little bit bigger than that. Like so. So now I've thickened it up. And I will also apply Catmull Clark subdivision on it. Just to soft, soften up this edge right here. Like that. And that should be good, good enough. Uh, if we do custom preview with a swatch, and the swatch is black, and we hide this, and we also why why are you not you should be black hello <laughs> that's super weird ain't gonna lie that's super super weird i think that's something to do with my with my shading settings i will investigate that in just a second maybe if we go to rendered preview it's gonna show up nicely no, it doesn't. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Hmm. Wait, just give me a second. Uh, if we go to display edit Arctic settings, here I can choose to, instead of custom materials, I can do rendering material. Okay, so that doesn't work. Single color. That's a bit better, but still doesn't work. Objects color. Yeah, so something something's off with uh, with the new version of Rhino. It it hasn't been doing this before. Whatever, uh, we're we're gonna stick to it. I can still see it, right? So so that's that's fine. Also, maybe in shaded view. Super strange. Anyway, let's let's stick to it. Um, Arctic view. We do have this effect going on, right? And if I move move this around. 
oh yeah, it's going to be slow now. But you can still see it, right? Look, this connects. Um, so now let's set up our, our angle, our camera. And I'll do something like this. And I will just set up the, the eyes. Uh, maybe they can watch, uh, they can look up something like that. <clears throat> Same thing for um, the, the, the other eyeball thing or iris thing. There we go. Something, something like that. Just kind of investigating. Um, and I want these two to work independently from one another. So the, the two eyes work separately. Uh, so I'm just going to real quickly select this, copy paste, just make a copy of it. Uh, type in show. So I have two spheres and one sphere is going to be controlled by this set one B rep and the other sphere is going to be controlled by the one in the bottom set one B rep. There we go. So now I have control over it like that. Hmm. Something's fishy. Now it's showing. Oh, never mind. See how that disappeared? That was a that was a bug, for sure. Okay. So those two work and the top ones are there. Let's show. Let's get this into Grasshopper as well as a B rep. Is that one? Oh, sorry, it's a it's a mesh. That one mesh. Hide it. What the? I don't understand. Uh, l l let's see. Hide. Oh, there we go. Hide. Custom preview. Let's just see if it's still broken. It is still broken. So weird. So weird. Hmm. Yep. Uh, so for, for this mesh, basically, all, all I want for, for this mesh is just to subdivide it. So I'll just do a Catmull Clark subdivision and bake it out again. Beerbird's Catmull Clark subdivision. Uh, just one level should be enough. Well, I'll do two maybe. Uh, we have 85,000. If I do two levels, that's going to be third of a million. That's too much. So let's do 85,000 polygons. Uh, bake. Yeah, as a default layer, sure. Don't need this anymore, delete that. This is much smoother now than what we had before. I will lock it. I will show to see the old version, delete that. So this is the new version, right? That this is what we're dealing with. And then we have our uh, irises. So this one is that and this one can be like that. Maybe. I'm just messing messing around. Twenty four zero four two. Twenty four zero four two should be. Yes, both of these are looking exactly in the correct uh, orientation. So now it's just this that can kind of move around and become become pretty a, a pretty cool iris thing 
um, let's render this out, right? Because this is kind of done. All we need to do is now just set up a V-Ray render to, to, to get this working. And there, there are like eyelash services and so on that we could use, but uh, I, I don't think for this particular tutorial we need to. Um, there's also like uh, hair that we would like to add and whatnot, but again, not part of the tutorial. Instead, I will be kind of zooming in pretty close like that. Going to my trusted V-Ray Asset Editor. Let's go to Settings and let's just do a quick interactive render just to see what's, what's going on right now. So this is what we have. Uh, not, not that great. Let's position the camera properly. Bam. Bam. I think we can do a little bit lesser lens length so or, or higher. So let's do 90 or maybe 90 is a bit too aggressive, 70, so that there is less distortion. Something like that. Also, um, let me jump into top view and real quickly create a directional light. Uh, like that. So that is my, uh, actually, I don't need a sphere anymore. That's my directional light. I can, I can go to, let's see, our, my front view uh, becomes my perspective, another perspective view. And here I can mess around with the directional light and its position. So first of all, let me move it to the face. I have too much shit going on right now on, on the screen, but it is what it is. Move uh, from this point to the nose, or somewhere close to the nose, like that. And now let me just, ugh, crap, let me just move it up. Apparently it's hard to do that. There we go. Like that sharper there we go so now this is in the shadow that's that's fine with me um and we have like a let's say this is the main light i want one more so i'll just holding down the alt key make a copy of this so this is going to be like the the, the secondary light oh crap messed it up secondary light that kind of just slides along the, the, the face. Uh, so now everything is super, super bright, super white and whatnot. Uh, let's start messing up with the, uh, with the settings. I want a kind of a manga feel to this. So first things first, I won't have any global illumination. That is gone, right? There's no, there is no global illumination at all. For environment, I will be using I will not be using a background, it's just going to be completely black. So something like this. Then for lights, I will be... For the directional lights, my shadow radius is going to be zero, so it's going to be super sharp shadows. Like that. Okay, we are getting there, right? Uh, now... I need, I still do need the global illumination, right? So what I'm going to do is I will create one more light source that is going to be just a point light. I'll just place it anywhere on the scene, doesn't matter where I place it. Um, and then my Omni light is not going to have any decay whatsoever. And also it's not going to produce shadows. So it's, it's kind of doing this thing. Doesn't affect diffuse, doesn't affect specular. Mm, that's, that's weird that it does that, though. Does it matter where it's positioned then? Second, trying to figure this out. Where's my... Oh my god. Oh, it's super high up. Position it here. There we go. That's that's what I want. 
that's what I want. And now we change this to like 10. Less 1. Less uh, 0.5. Something like that. Just to get a little bit of light in. And now it, all we need to do is just set up the materials, right? And, and we're kind of good to go. So in terms of material setting, um, I will be creating uh, the, the material. So gen uh, my skin is going to be generic material. The iris is also going to be a generic material. So I'm going to create that. And the eyeball itself, I think we will have an emissive, mat emissive material for the eyeball. So that's a little bit more glowy. Um, so let me just rename the generic ones. Uh, first one is skin. Second one is eyeball. Okay, so we have that going on. And then back in grasshopper, right here, we do have our V-Ray tab in, in Grasshopper. Let me stop the, the render here. We do have our V-Ray tab and I will try to do um, some of it in Grasshopper, right? So the eyeball and the eye, well, actually the eyeball, I can apply it to these and not render out the eyeballs in here. So that's fine, but the irises, I will need to kind of generate them in Grasshopper and feed them into the render of, of, of uh, into V-Ray, right, uh, through Grasshopper. So we will need to set it up here. So uh, actually the first thing that we do is let's, uh, let's look at the eyeballs and just select them. Wait, sorry, the eyeball is actually the emissive material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the not the eyeball, but the iris. Yes. So I just applied the emissive material to the eyeball. If I look at this and render it out real quick, now we can see that this is glowing. Raiden style. Uh, let's change the emissive, to, emissive intensity to something very low 0.1 just so that the eyes are a little bit more shiny than uh, the rest of the body then for the skin i will just select uh, yeah unlock i'll select this and skin i will just apply the skin like that and lock this again and the skin can just be kind of reflective or do we, maybe we don't want it to be that reflective. <sighs> it's always, it's always weird uh, trying, trying to do uh, like an anime style render here. Um, let's think, let's think real, real fast. So if the skin is reflective, it's not gonna, gonna be pretty bad. But if it's just slightly reflective, we will get those those values here, which which are nice. But for the color of the skin, I will be using um, what's called uh, God damn it, where is it? Fresnel Fresnel map. And let me just show you what it does. If I change this color to red and this color to blue you can see that this kind of sharpness appear, right? And I can change the Fresnel values to, to get something that resembles line work around the perimeter, right? So I can do that. But also, so let me stick to, let's say, red is white or, or gray. Else, which is so so now my line work is going to be red and i will use 0 0.1 or, or 1.1 as my fresnel value so i get this kind of red glow i'll jump back i'll right click on the color texture wrap it in um i don't remember is it spline curve or bezier curve let's try spline curve and i think for values if i ramp it up like so that doesn't really help. I'm I'm looking at this basically. Uh, 
I'm just kind of trying to figure out how to get this line much more aggressive. So that doesn't really work. But also, at the same time, we are getting these, um, these black values here, which, which are kind of nice. So I'll stick to it. Yeah, I'll go back in here and I'll choose zero, uh, 1.2. 1.4. And this becomes black. Yeah, okay, so we do get a little bit of line work in here. That's all, we, all I wanted, right? Just, just to get those, those sharper lines. Um, then, next thing up, next, next thing that we do is we change up the contrast, right? Uh, to get rid of these gradients. So I'll... Um, in this right hand side corner, I'll open this up, create a new layer, and I'll choose oh, curves. No, let's do exposure. Exposure control, um, highlight burn, full on highlight burn, and just amp up the contrast like that and increase the exposure like that. Just to get hmm, maybe that's kind of cool. Maybe a little bit less contrast, less exposure, more exposure. That's this would be with a lot of exposure. Yeah, something like that could could do the trick. I, I, I do enjoy this this kind of a aesthetic. So we're almost there. If I kind of look around here. Yeah, that's a pretty good shader. Pretty good look in itself. Okay. I'm just trying to find the um, like the final angle just real quick. Uh hello, why are you not rendering? Ah, there we go. Okay, so we have this, and the final one, the one that we were waiting for, is the iris, right? So that's the Catmull Clark subdivision right here, and Catmull Clark subdivision right here. I will join this up <coughs> into one mesh component just so that it's easier for me to kind of render them out like that. Come on, there we go, and I will. Now, under render, I will choose V-Ray render, or, yeah, V-Ray render. Under render, I'll choose V-Ray render in project. This will send any geometry that I give it into my scene, and it's going to be rendered out there, right? Uh, rather than opening up a new window here for, for the grasshopper rendering. Then here I don't really care about any settings because I'm I'm using the ones from V-Ray Asset Editor. So what but, but I, what I do care about is the element. No. V-Ray geometry, right? So I, I will add V-Ray geometry node like that. And I'll give it the mesh as my geometry to render. And you can see it already pops up. And for my material. I will use, oh, sorry, not color swatch. Ah. I will instead use materials, very material from project, like that. 
and I'll choose iris. Right? So now, this is always going to render out a material that I have set up here as my iris. So if I set this up to be red, it's going to render out red. Right? So we can do a lot of weird stuff with this. And I think I, I might do some weird stuff. Let's try. Let's try. So if I create a new material that's emissive, real quick, and I'll call this like iris pool. I'll just call it iris cool. We change this to iris cool material. Now these are glowing. But if for the color, I choose to use, uh, again, Fresnel reflection, like that. And we change this up from perpendicular to parallel. If we change this up and IOR, we do, let's do 1.5 for IOR, but we wrap this in. Was it Spline or Bezier? I don't, I never remember. Wrap this in in a higher value. Will this work? It seems like it broke. Uh, the, the the grasshopper to rhino uh, connection. So let me stop that and re-render this just to see. Okay, it does it does work. Again, let's increase the intensity. That doesn't work. It immediately breaks it. Okay, so we found we found a bug. <laughs> we found a bug that immediately breaks it. Um, okay, we will not be using emissive color for our iris material. We will just be using the regular one. Yeah, you can see here it's it's broken. But what if we iris cool? Yeah, fair enough. Just iris. We will just be using the regular one. Yeah, and that's it. We are we are done. Uh, there are things that uh, are left to do, like animating it, and then kind of you, you can animate it. You can add more stuff to it. But uh, this tutorial was all about the, the basic principle of mapping uh, mapping stuff to a sphere, right? And and being able to to kind of use it. For, for your renders in a character design uh, environment, which is always, always strange, <laughs> always strange. But now, uh, just as a final, final note before we finish up, I will take, for instance, this value and I'll just move it to the side and you can see that it updates here, right? which means that it can be animated. And since, since it can be animated, I will be doing it, but it's not going to be part of the, uh, part of the tutorial uh, because it's going, it would just take way too long to kind of show and explain. And we're already kind of reaching that one hour mark, which I never want to cross with these tutorials. Um, so I'll finish up here. Uh, I will show you the final model or the final animation that I've made uh, right after like my goodbye saying. And both this and the amped up version of this definition from which I create the animation is going to be available for the Patreon supporters. So if you want to kind of be lazy, not follow along and just get the stuff for free, uh, consider supporting the channel in Patreon, link in the video description. Also, commenting, liking, and subscribing really, really helps the channel. Okay. We're done with this one. I'll see you next time. Bye. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again, I wake again, I pray the Lord that I... Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again, I wake again, I pray the Lord that I wake again.
sleep, I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again. I wake again. I pray the Lord that I wake again.